All right, I should probably get back to this because I'm playing with the kitty instead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm easily distracted. Squirrel. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Imperfectly Me Crafts. We are here at Metal Monkey Brewing Company here in Romeoville, Illinois to try the brews, check the views, and see what they offer to all of you. So we'll be back here on March 12th to shave our head for St. Baldrick's Charity to raise money for children's cancer research. So if you can, click that link in the description. Donate to the kids because this is an amazing charity and we'll be donating for wigs as well. So that'll be fun. If you haven't already, don't leave us untapped tap that like subscribe and notification bell so you never have to miss another brewery tour let's go oh it's backwards <laughs> hello and welcome to imperfectly me crafts i'm mallory choose behind the camera hello and, oh there he went okay <laughs> We are here today at Metal Monkey Brewing Company, where if you've been watching some of our previous yeah. videos, you know this is where we're coming to shave our hair. But if you're lucky, maybe you'll get, I'll get some head banging in before we're done today, because this place is all metal and rock. Absolutely fantastic space. I mean, all the decor is monkeys and skulls. Like, it's fantastic. So we are starting right now with First round. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> so our very first beer is their Romeo Pills. It's a German style Pilsner. Not much on the nose. A uh, little bit of almost like a grass scent. Very, very light. First beer of first round. Bottoms up, boys and girls. Ooh, that is all flowers. Orchid and lavender and lilac and violets and a woody flavor, um, a little bit of like grass, wheat. There are so many plant flavors in this, <laughs> it's amazing. But it's so fresh and refreshing. This is spring in the glass. And here it is March, so yay spring, right? <laughs> Tell that groundhog to get lost. <laughs> <laughs> is that the sound groundhogs make? When you tell them to get lost, oh. they go, it sounded like your Mario guy just died. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit dry on the end that makes you want to come back for more. Mm, it lingers just a smidge, but that is gorgeous. Our next one, the Ellis Redding, their Irish Red Ale. Strong, maltiness, light sweetness. Why do they call you red? It must be because I'm Irish. Oh, it took me a second, sorry. <laughs> It's from the movie Shaw Shank Redemption. Oh, is it? Yep. Oh, I'm not a movie watcher as much. I count on Chew for the, the movie references, so thank you. I smell charred wood and malts and a little bit of smoke. Just a hint, like the memory of smoke. My whole house needs to smell like this. <laughs> That's, it's that good. Cheers, everyone. Sharper clothes than I was expecting. The scent is the same as the taste. I got the taste and I have that char and that I have that char and that smoke at the beginning. But then there's a sharp hop close. It hit me mostly on the right side, actually. That was interesting. It leaves this lingering smoke taste. I'm, I'm a really big fan of this one. We have a kitty hanging out under our table. <laughs> you are so cute. Our next one, this is called their Hinokami. It's an American stout. This stout offers notes of chocolate, roast, and coffee. We then added habanero to give this a kick in the teeth. Brewed in collaboration with Yakuza, one of Chicago's premier metal bands. If they have it canned, I'll send it over to Brian the beer snob. And blue. I know how much, and blue. The blue blue likes it. Yeah. <laughs> blue actually likes the spicy ones and Brian loves them. <laughs> okay, everybody loved watching Brian try it. Everybody loves watching Brian try the spicy ones, that is true. And on the nose, I get a vanilla, soft chocolate vanilla, gentle, uh, nothing stand out in the nose. It's, it smells like a normal stout. No heat? I don't get any heat on the nose. Cheers, everyone, to a habanera stout. Yeah. <laughs> 
That has heat. Oh, but it has smoke too. Oh wow. I'm still I'm still burning a little in the back, but um, this reminds me of a smoked porter. Standing downwind of your neighbor's smoker. But then it has that burn at the back of the throat. It's strong. It gave me a little cough there, but it's kind of a fun burn too, you know? Oh, I like that one a lot. Does it taste this like? one is a stout, but it reminds me of a smoked porter. Okay. Oh, that flavor is gorgeous. And that little hint of burn is fun. Ooh. And that's the Hinokami. Highly recommended, and that is beautiful. We are on to our very last one. This one came out just a few weeks ago. We were here, um, they were having a big party that night. It was their sixth anniversary celebration. They had live bands, they had all metal, of course. Um, and the place was hopping, and they released a new series called uh, Balloon Head. And these are sours, but they're candy sours. This is their blue raspberry balloon head. They also have a cherry, a grape, and a mystery one. It's a fruited Berliner Weiss. Oh, it smells like a blue raspberry dum dum. The little suckers they used to give you at the bank. It smells like a blue raspberry dum dum. I got that after dentist appointment when I was little. A, a dentist appointment? See, after dentist, really? <laughs> they were trying to get it to go back more. Oh, see, I always got it when Dad would go to the bank. But yeah, those little suckers, it smells like the blue raspberry of those. And almost like a cotton candy. Cheers to the last beer of first round. Ooh, more sour than I was anticipating based on the scent. The scent smelled all sugar. Definitely more sour on the flavor. But not like super pucker worthy. This is, this is one pucker just about, but it does have a candy aspect to it, like you're getting a sour just turning to sweet. Sweet tart. Oh yeah, it tastes like sweet tart. Yeah, blue raspberry sweet tart. It does, it tastes like the sweet hearts. And can I just say how cute their tasting glasses are? I mean, just yeah, take a moment, because that's adorable. That has been the end of round one. We are on to round two. A heck of a lineup. Fingers crossed we get through this one okay, because we got some strong ones this time. We're gonna start with their Goulet, an American IPA. Oh, and the nose is all citrus. Um, Hop citrus or citrus citrus? The nose is citrus citrus. But there's something, there's something that caught me off guard. Hold on. There's a grapefruit, tangerine, normal citrus that you smell. But there's a sweet, a sweet fruit that I'm smelling, like, almost like a peach, maybe a nectarine, but mm. a ripe, ripe nectarine. 
I smell the sugar of that fruit and that's softening the acidity of the citrus fruit. I'm interested, but it says yeah. it's going to be a pine bitterness, so mm. I, I know what I'm in for. Get ready for the doom. <laughs> First beer of second round. Cheers, guys. <laughs> that's hoppy. <laughs> um, but that start was all citrus. I didn't taste the sweet fruit that I was smelling. I just tasted the, the grapefruit, the tangerine, the um, maybe blood orange. I'm tasting blood orange as well. On the flavor, I'm getting the, the straight up citrus. I'm not getting whatever sweet fruit I smelled. But then it does go straight up pine and that and it has a sharp bitter close to it and when i finished it i wanted another sip so this one definitely draws you back in that is i mean i know i made the hoppy face and i'm probably sitting at two bunny foots for this one because it definitely had a sharp hop bite but the balance is gorgeous and i like the journey that it takes me on and it makes me want it more. Right, second beer of second round. This one is called Funky Mucker. This is one of their flagship. A Russian Imperial Stout. Candy sugar, chocolate malt, cocoa, and roasted peanuts get freaky in an epic candy-like palate party. The nose is gentle though. I get a little bit of a, almost a peanut butter scent. Cheers everyone. Wow. Going in and having read the description, I was expecting more of a dessert Imperial Stout. This one's a straight up stout, but it has hints of those dessert flavors. I get roasted peanut, not peanut butter. Cocoa nibs, there's something else, uh, a bitterness. This is supposed to be almost, what, 15 more IBUs than this beer. But this one made me make a crazy face and this one did not. There is bitterness, but with all the other flavors, it's harder to pick it out. It's very, very well balanced. It's like a traditional stout with a roasted peanut ending. It's the skin on a roasted peanut. Oh, like the paper? Yeah, not the shell. Yeah. That's what I'm tasting. That's the flavor. He's right. And it's not heavy. It's not heavy. For a stout, it's not heavy and at it's all. It's 9.3. It does not taste like a 9.3 at all. Oh, that is highly recommended. I really, really like that one. We are going on with Tony's Car. This is an Imperial IPA. It is 110 IBUs. And I'm terrified. It's <laughs> hot the secret Galaxy and Simcoe. This beer is not for the faint of heart. Balanced nicely with the malt sweetness, this double IPA offers citrusy, piney, dank, and fruity flavors. This beer will stri strip the enamel from your teeth and leave you begging for more. <laughs> I don't smell anything. <laughs> oh, see, it won't be that bad. I, I smell a little citrus, that's it. <laughs> I'm gonna dive right in. Cheers, everyone. Look at the camera. <laughs> I can't open my eyes. up a little bit <laughs> that's very very bitter it's it's softening now but it took a it took a minute to soften you got the citrus up front that is true front of the tongue was all the citrus all the normal things you would expect of a I wouldn't call it a west coast I wouldn't call it an east coast but it's somewhere in between um, so Midwest it's right in between I, I guess, I, did anyone ever nail down what a Midwest IPA was? If you know, tell me in the comments, because honestly, I've heard so many people say so many different things, it's hard to say. But yeah, this has that 
hazy, juice-forward start, but it ends like a West Coast. The second sip still got me. Usually that doesn't happen. I usually don't make coffee. You didn't even drink any of it. Look at that. Look at that. For you, it's a four. For That's me, what this we is put on. A hundred percent. Uh, my third sip still had me making a happy face. To me, that's 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 four. That's four bunny foots out of four bunny foots. This is the officially the hoppiest, bitterest beer I've ever had. If you love it, this is the place to be. Because I have, we've been filming breweries and going to breweries for ten years. This is the first time I would say, yeah, this is the hoppiest beer I've ever had. We are on to our very last beer of second round, and this one is one of their barrel-aged series. This is their barrel-aged Death by Metal. It is an Imperial Porter. Eternal darkness has nothing on this rich, dark, and semi-sweet barrel-aged porter balanced perfectly that has been aging for one year in Templeton Rye Barrel. Again, not much on the nose. Um, a little bit of coffee with creamer scent. There's a milk sweetness to it. Cheers to the end of second round. That is a porter that drinks like a barley wine. First half of the first second, I got nothing, no flavor. All of a sudden, it just turned on the volume to 11. And I got straight up black porter, nothing else. No sweetness, no dessert, no anything they mentioned there. I got straight up black porter. After the next half a second, it turned from 11 up to 21, and I got the booziness. The booze stepped in and then showed all that other stuff that I was missing so far. All this happened in about a second and a half. <laughs> it was kind of incredible. Wow. <laughs> that was cool. But once those flavors kicked in, I got the vanilla. I got that almost a milk sugar flavor, though they didn't say anything about lactose in this one. Um, very creamy. It, it, it tastes like you added a really fun creamer to your coffee. Like, that's kind of, but then you have that booze kick, like, okay, yeah, you had the fun creamer, but you might have put a couple dollops of Kahlua in there. That's what I'm tasting. So we have Choose Challenge coming up next. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> I had to figure out which one was the lowest ABV. <laughs> Chu has chosen a game off of their shelf called Tumblin' Monkeys, since we're at Metal Monkey Brewing Company. For those of you that, well, 80s, 90s kids, Kerplunk, same idea, but instead of marble, it's cute little monkeys. So we're gonna dump these in the top. You can pull out sticks. You're trying not to drop the monkeys. We'll see who wins. Okay. okay. One for me. So if a monkey falls down, you get it and you want to have the least amount of monkeys. I, I got, oh. I dropped a monkey. She really dropped the monkey. It fell on the floor. I got one monkey. You got two monkeys. Yes, I'm in the lead. All right, two That's to one. That's not how that works. <laughs> two to two. Oh. Three to two. Uh, 
three to three. You like to keep it close. Oh. Four to three. Oh. I know there's a lot of monkeys on here, but I think they're all going to get trapped. Oh, none of them got trapped. Six right, to three. Sixteen to three. And then I get the stick with all these monkeys yep. on it, so let's see. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sixteen to ten. I only had ten monkeys. I won. I had sixteen monkeys. That's bad too. Oh, you could have explained the rules better to me. <laughs> they all understood the rules, you understood the rules, I won, I'm awesome, bam. Say goodbye. Bye-bye. Go lower. It's making me go like, with my head down here and I can't. Now say goodbye. Bye. Uh, camera is not there, it's there. <laughs> yes. We are moving on. If I can find the name of the second beer. Words are fun, I need yeah. to start that over. <laughs> uh, they have a, is this not picking up? No, you're just whispering. Well, I'm not whispering, I'm just. It's gonna sound. I'm thinking, and I'm not worried about my volume while I think. When you think and talk, look that way, instead of that way. Because your mic is that way. Fair enough. <laughs> right now our whole house smells like Bud Light. <laughs> In fact, when I when I closed down and I like scrunched up my face, there's an actor that used to do that and when he would do it, his face just looked like lines. Don't know. I'm gonna find a picture of that guy scrunching up his face and put it next to mine because you're gonna see. This one does make her hiccup though. Did you notice it, that guys? It did, <laughs> it did make me hiccup a little. <laughs> Yeah, got me. I do know that that one made my face do weird things. <laughs> uh, this is one of their flagships. It's called <laughs> Funky Mucker. Funky, Funky Munker? Funky Mucker. <laughs> so there you go, Chew, and I have differing views on the lingering of it, which is fine. I mean, it's normal, but yeah. One is correct, one is wrong. That is right. You guys guess which one's correct. <laughs> Two thumbs that are pointing at Chew. <laughs> and the kitty's butt is pointed at Chew too, so don't listen to him. Good. 
Yeah. Smile. Smile higher. I don't know what higher means. I don't either. That's why I went sideways. 